BBC Dale Gate 433 here back to do the next episode in my Lost in the Collection series. This is episode 18. I think I said last week's was 18, well it was only 17. So five records, yes, five records I haven't listened to for five years or, or more. Um, going back, re-evaluating. So the theme, loose theme this week is um, the the covers all have a blue or have blue in them um or struggling um yeah so let's get on with it so first up is this album this is a reissue obviously um of uh the um sort of seminal 1970 is it i need to say 70 prog Prog Psych, Heavy Prog album, um, It'll All Work Out in Boomland by T2. So this, as I said, is a, is a, I don't know when it was reissued, but, you know, the last sort of seven or eight years. Uh, and, yeah, really, really good, but um, it does go incredibly heavy at times, and it takes you bits by surprise. So I, so I started the, um, the listening week with this, so I think I listened to it on Sunday evening, I probably Sunday evening probably wasn't the time that I, I wanted to be listening to this necessarily um, so yeah so I really enjoyed if you like the 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 regular um, rock sound um, it's got quite a lot going on a bit of folky a bit of psyche obviously it's badged as prog um, but it's kind of like proto proto heavy rock proto heavy metal in in some places but only for like short flourishes and it just say catches you by surprise um, and for for a Sunday night, I didn't quite get that, um, but very proficient. Um, I'm going to read some notes here to try and remind myself because it was last Sunday, and my memory's shocking. Um, yeah, so apart from that, it was, yeah, it was enjoyable, um, but uh, yeah, um, and a fantastic cover artwork. <laughs> okay, next up, change of gear, um, as normal. Um, and this is well, there's lots there is blue on this, but it's one more green probably. Um, is Roseanne Cash, uh, the river and the thread. So this is oh, not much I'm getting date for. This is uh, 2014 album on Blue Note. Uh, yeah, this is a lovely, lovely record for us. In fact, I should play this on a Sunday night. This would be a perfect record for a Sunday Sunday night. Uh, it's um, in incredibly enjoyable, relaxing um, in terms of its music. The music is very kind of relaxing um, and evenly paced. Uh, I would say it kind of goes from slow to mid, slow to mid, the maximum doesn't kind of rock out there at all. All lovely songs, lovely voice. Um, and that's probably the only thing I would say that maybe lets it down is it is a little bit one dimensional in that respect but um and obviously as somebody who doesn't pay massive attention to the lyrics i'm probably missing out there I'll probably find that all the lyrics are incredibly uh, in depth but uh, i just didn't spot that but musically really enjoyable really enjoyable um we've got a good band going on um some good sounds what else did i say anything else no no okay next up is and I'm going to butcher this uh, Premiata for Neria Marconi uh, PFM and the world became the world so I think PF I think they got the name for some kind of like bakers in it in Italy something like that I remember reading somewhere so this is the UK press with the on manticore with a die cut sleeve and the kind of little bits that get trashed every time you've absent-mindedly put it back into uh, the plastic cover so yeah 1974 Italian uh, band so this is my only album I did have three or four albums by them I got rid of the rest kept this one it this has got some really nice moments in it um, this this is probably a fairly good example of um, you know where I struggle with prog you know this this has got quite a lot going on um and it it doesn't engage me i don't engage with the the, the story of this album it, it and so it's sometimes you know where i lose lose kind of touch with prog is when it just 
it's about the technicality rather than you know the the, in the warmth the message and I don't, I don't even mean by the words because I don't say the words is message of the music it just didn't feel I just didn't feel it um, some of it's really really nice and I really enjoyed it but as a as a kind of overall album um, and uh, you know I didn't really really engage with it okay probably so similar about this so this next one is Jack White's Blunderbuss so this was his first solo album after the White Stripes um, finished uh, and uh, yep yeah, it's very white stripe E. If I remember again, if I remember rightly about the time, this 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 was about the time I think he was going through a breakup, uh, and I think there was quite a lot in the press about the kind of hidden meaning behind some of the lyrics here. But you know, my understanding is that you know the 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 breakup has kind of ended up fairly fairly amicable. But um, I don't know whether the the the, the, the subject matter of the songs was or wasn't linked to to that or not but um you know they, they kind of got that kind of leaning if you, if you want to read that into it it's got some standouts that i think were singles uh 16 saltines um and i'm shaking are you know quite energetic upbeat uh the drummer is could have been meg <laughs> um in my in my mind so this is you know, and there's another really nice song, Weep Themselves to Sleep is another good song. Um, the rest is all fine. It just feels like, you know, not quite as good as a White Stripes album to me. Uh, and, you know, would I reach for this uh, rather than reach for a White Stripes album? I don't know. But enjoyed. Enjoyable. Enjoyable, but not essential in my view. Um, and then finally... Um, Finishing the week, one I nearly forgot to listen to. I thought, oh, I better do the video um, yesterday, and then thought, hang on, I haven't listened to this album, which probably says a lot itself. So this is Elton John's Diving Board, or The Diving Board. Uh, so this came out, whenever it came out, 2013, was it? 2014, I can't see the writings blurring in with the artwork. Um, this is... Supposedly, if again, if I remember about the kind of reviews and, the, and, and at the time, supposedly this was Elton returning to the style with Bernie Taupin writing, but returning to his early 70s style. And that's probably what got me interested. So where am I with Elton John? I, I really, really like Elton John uh, at, up to 1975 uh, and even... 90, around 1975, 74, some of it's patchy. So, <clears throat> you know, I've got six, I think six Elton John albums that I absolutely love and then everything else I don't care for really at all. There is no kind of <laughs> middle ground um, with me and Elton John. So, is it Elton John, um, Madman Across the Water, Honky Chateau, Tumbleweed Connection, Goodbye Yellow Bit Road and Captain Fantastic. Those six albums to me are all excellent. The rest, I'd say, don't care for. And this, yeah, it doesn't quite... So it's got some really good bits on it. I think I even may have wrote down. So, yeah, I think Oscar Wilde gets out. Um, and uh, Ballad of Blind Tom. And Can't Stay Alone. Voyeur. I think they're, they're all quite good songs. Um, what does let it down is... And this is, you know, I think you've heard me say this before, probably it's it is a bit of a crackly pressing. Um, and that really does. I, I get really frustrated when I buy a brand new record, um, get it out, you know, even clean it, anti-static, everything. And it's just a crack pressing um, and it crackles and that just takes away the enjoyment. Um, and I don't know who whether to blame the artist for not, for, you know, or the or the you know, production company or the, you know, the, the agent or who, who do I blame for? So this was, this was pressed at the kind of infamous, if you like, I'd say GZ vinyl in, in Czech Republic or GZ vinyl, uh, which is patchy. I've got quite a lot of records because, because they are a massive organization. They press a lot of records. So hence why I've got a lot of records and they're not, you know, it's hit and miss 50, 50 probably. 
Um, 50% of them are fine, absolutely great, and 50% of them, it's sort of that crackly, staticky noise that you think, oh, there's something wrong, you know, it needs a clean, or but it's not, it's just, it is ne always going to be like that. Uh, and, you know, particularly if it's a kind of acoustic-y um, piano ballad album, um, it makes me not enjoy listening to it, um, and therefore I probably, that influences what I think of the album, rather than, you know, it's the pressing, not the album, if you know what I mean. So, so yeah, so I don't, re I won't reach for this album because I think, oh, I even, I even remembered that this, you know, this was from 2013 when I got it. Um, I even remembered, I thought, oh, isn't that a crackly one? So I haven't played it for five or six years um, because it's the crackly one. Um, and I wouldn't mind that if it was a, if this was a 50 year old record that I'd bought from a, from a record fair um, and um, put it on and it crackled. I could accept that because, you know, I don't know what life it's had, what tone tables it's been on, if it looked great or it, I could see a few marks or, you know, it looked clean and it crackled. Um, I'd be okay with that. And Or if it was an album that I've had throughout my life and I know why it crackles because I can remember that's when I knocked the arm when I was drunk um, that time, then it's fine. But a new record, no, it sort of really doesn't get on my wick as you can tell, because I've now wasted two and a half minutes of this video going on about it. <clears throat> anyway, it's okay as an album. It is a vintage, early 70s Elton John. Good, so that sounds like a disappointing week. What did I enjoy most um, in the week? Uh, probably, out of all of it then, I probably enjoyed the, the Razan Cash um, the most. Um, and I probably would have enjoyed the T2 if I'd listened to it at a different time. Um, so yeah, so um, I've done this. Uh, this is Saturday morning. I've just been just been got my hair cut. Just got home. Uh, so I'm, I'm now Sean and ready for Richard McCook to drop his uh, his promised um, fiendish uh, challenge for the for the weekend. Okay, I'll stop rambling now. Uh, so that's three minutes I've rambled now. Cheers, VC. Bye.